Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I'm here in South San Francisco at a new charge net, in fact the first charge net charging site that just went live. It's at a Taco Bell. I featured this a little bit when I went to fully charge live in San Diego, uh, but this is a brand new charging site provider. Uh, they have a number of sites planned. Uh, right now it sounds like mostly in the greater San Francisco Bay Area, uh, but you know I really like their model that they're working with where they're trying to pair these charging sites with businesses that can benefit from them being on site and at that location. In addition to installing multiple chargers, so a lot of times with the public charging infrastructure, we've gotten used to two, three, maybe four chargers per site. At this location, they're actually installing six 75 kilowatt tritium chargers and 75 kilowatt while a lot of people might point to that and say that's not very fast we have to remember that we need to look for the host business's benefit in order to place these public charging locations where it makes sense for both the site host and the people who are using them so if you're going to be coming to a restaurant like a taco bell and you plan to be here for 20, 30, 40 minutes to eat your food before you get back on the road again, well, it makes sense to have these 75 kilowatt chargers here because that really adds up to about the right amount of charge for being in a location for that period of time. So you're not necessarily gonna get fully charged, you're not going to add 200 miles in five to 10 minutes, but what you will be able to do is sit down, enjoy a meal, and your car will be charging the entire time. This is sort of the model that we look for as EV owners where we don't waste time on trips because we don't have to make discrete fueling stops. We stop where we want to stop and we fuel for as long as it makes sense to be at that location before moving on. So this fits really well into that. In addition, the site uh, features a number of things that we haven't seen from a lot of charging site providers. So not all of the chargers are under a solar canopy, but some of them are. And that's a nice thing to have the solar awning because not only does it protect the chargers from the sun, from the elements, uh, providing shade for people who are parking in the parking lot, it also adds power back into the grid or offsets the draw that these chargers draw from the grid, which really helps with things like demand charges, lowering the overall operational cost of these sites. So the approximate size of this solar array is about 80 kilowatts, which is enough by itself during peak sun to offset one of these DC fast chargers sort of in real time. In addition to the solar awning, they also have an on-site battery provided by Delta, uh, the same ones who I believe make the chargers that uh, I've been featuring at those EVgo sites. And the Delta battery is about 100, and 75 kilowatt hours so not a huge battery but again you're just looking at peak shaving and the inverter on that by itself could also offset about the draw from a single charger yes there are six 75 kilowatt tritium chargers here and between the solar and the battery that's really only able to offset maybe two of those chargers at a given time we have to understand that the most important aspect in cutting costs is really just cutting that peak off. And so as long as you're shaving that peak down, you're lowering the overall cost of the site. And one additional thing worth noting is that beyond just those six DC fast chargers, there are two additional level two chargers here. Now, these are not necessarily appropriate speed for a business location, but as a lot of people have started to point out, you want level two at a lot of these different DC fast charging sites because they are businesses. And guess what? If you work here, you might want to charge here. And that's a really important thing as well because we want to make sure that we're facilitating employees as well as potential customers uh, for these sites. In terms of connectivity, another thing that is really nice about this site is not only does it feature both CCS and Chatamo plugs on each charger, so really anyone can charge here. They also provide one Chatamo adapter for Tesla vehicles. So even if you're in a Tesla and you don't have a CCS or a Chatamo adapter, you can plug right in and you can hook up and be charging at 50 kilowatts 
at this site and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take a tour of the ChargeNet site. All right, so here's the solar awning. And, you know, I, I know that some of the uh, charging providers have, you know, talked about some concerns with doing this. I think both from a cost and the, the amount of energy that you offset. But I, I really, from an end user, from a customer, from a consumer perspective, I don't know of anybody who really disagrees with this model at all in terms of what it adds to a site. Um, even if you want to just say managing perceptions, right? Because if you're the only one plugging in charging at this site in the middle of the day, you can pretty much say, hey, look, I'm not running on fossil fuels, like it or not. So there's a lot of detractors who would try to, you know, minimize the contribution of something like this. And realistically, um, you know, they're just wrong. But, but also, uh, you look at the benefit that this is serving on a sunny day for basically all the customers who are here. This is energy that's not having to be used to run air conditioning in these gas-powered cars. You're saving fuel, you're saving um, you know, energy on all fronts, and you're just making a nicer, convenient experience for everybody. And then from the chargers, like I said, it looks like not all of them are covered, but I think this is a much better start than you know what you would expect from someone you know some of these other other networks now in terms of these chargers they are they are working there is a credit card payment reader um, so you can pay that way now they are also talking about having an app here uh, you can you can put your order in you can activate the charger so they're really trying to make things uh, very convenient in terms of the pricing um, I haven't really seen that yet. I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more investigating. Now, right now, and this is an interesting gauge and an interface. So it's drawing about 48 kilowatts, uh, which is, you know, what a uh, Chatmo uh, Tesla Chatmo adapter can do. Uh, this person looks like they brought their own Chatmo adapter. Uh, so that's kind of the limitation, but. It does go up to 75 kilowatt. If the Tesla owner were to have bought their CCS adapter, they could have been charging at about 200 amps right now, uh, which is you know much closer to that. Basically, it's a Tesla urban supercharger uh, speeds. So just overall, um, very nice. And then again, one other aspect of those solar panels is those cords are all in the shade. So a lot of degradation from UV and things like that, um, that's all, uh, abated just by having uh, a solar canopy over. Now, in addition, um, these tritium units, I haven't had the greatest luck with the tritium V-fill, uh, but it's primarily the RT50, uh, and, and these are or the RTM50, I guess, but these are an upgraded version of that, uh, and I, I'll have to look at all the designations for the different V-fill um, tritium chargers, but these are the ones that they're going to be offering up to 150 kilowatt. But again, I, I was actually just talking with the owner of the business here, and this is a thing that the EV owning community really needs to uh, understand is that in order to get buy in to put these chargers in at locations, we really need to make sure that we have these business owners best you know best interest in, in mind as well because they're giving up valuable valuable real estate uh, they're tying in their power grid they you know parts of their parking lot aren't in use anymore so you really want to make sure that you're benefiting everybody involved and you know if you have a 350 kilowatt charger here that uh, someone pulls in and is only here for five ten minutes and doesn't even use the store because they've added 200 miles and they're back on the road uh, how does that benefit the site host? So we have to make sure that we are matching our expectations for charger speed uh, with the needs of the site site business. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to using more of these newer tritium units, not like the older V-fills that, like I said, felt a little bit problematic to me in using them. Um, but, uh, but that's what ChargeNet is going with right now. So, um, but then, like I said, also in terms of 
in terms of these speeds, right, we need to make sure that we're matching these, you know, 75 kilowatt chargers with these sort of businesses that expect sit-down customers. And, uh, you know, when we're, uh, you know, when we're at maybe a convenience store, then we can start talking about things like 350 kilowatt chargers. And on this end, we have the grid type battery. So a lot of that solar power that's coming in, it's even if it's not being used for offsetting uh, peak power uh, from the chargers, it can be used to store power, um, possibly feed power back into the grid. Uh, so just an overall good energy solution. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of the direction that I think every, you know, fast charging site needs to, to, to go in because realistically uh, you can't have these high power charging sites everywhere unless you're also going to be uh, you know, offsetting that, that huge demand that they're going to put on the grid. Now this site is actually, again, these aren't the fastest chargers, 75 kilowatt, uh, so even the combined six chargers you see on this site, uh, they're really only adding about 450 uh, kilowatts draw at peak and realistically um, you're not even going to see that right with maybe around 400 kilowatt would probably be the most you would ever see drawn from this site um, and so with the solar array and with the battery you could offset a good portion of that uh, and really bring down those demand charges for just sporadic usage interim usage um, and then again like I said not all of these chargers are covered but some of them do have additional shading. Uh, so you, you're not completely out in the open, but you're not completely, uh, you're not completely uh, um, sheltered either. So based on this too, the Chatamo does look like it's restricted to 125 amps, which uh, it's still, still listed as 75 kilowatt, but um, I, yeah, I don't think that that's necessarily accurate. And that could just be uh, based on the cabling themselves. I know sometimes it can be hard to source 200 amp uh, Chatamo cabling. In fact, you can just see the difference um, between the thickness of the cable on the CCS1 connector and the cable on the Chatamo connector. So um, they do also have these clearly marked uh, Charger 1, Charger 2 um, cycling around. So um, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm really liking this site, liking this model. We'll see how these cable retentions hold up over time. Like I said, these are sort of untested for me, so we'll have to see. All right, so there's some good news and bad news to close out. Um, they said that charging was free here uh, for the day. Uh, so I decided, you know what, I was down to like 25% battery coming in. And, uh, you know, I'd swing around and use the chargers before I close out here. And uh, I downloaded the ChargeNet app, but it doesn't seem to be necessary uh, to activate a charge right now because it's free. Uh, but that's worth noting too, is that right now there's only a two cent per kilowatt hour difference between using the app and not using the app, right? So they have a credit card reader. Uh, they don't really wanna discourage people from paying or interfacing with the charger in whatever way makes sense for them. Uh, so unlike some of the other charging networks that have really punitive pricing for non-members, it's literally a two cent per kilowatt hour difference. So it's 44 cents per kilowatt hour uh, if you are a member with ChargeNet and potential like benefits to come. And then a, uh, you know, 46 cents per kilowatt hour if you're just paying by credit card and that's all there is to it. But the issue is here, the, this is the first time I've used one of these newer tritium chargers and it's not compatible with uh, the early Bolt EV it looks like. So whether this is something that GM needs to get on and work with tritium on, uh, this is the first company, ChargeNet is the first company I know of in North America who is using these chargers and uh, I don't know that anybody else would really be able to identify this error, uh, but I plugged in, it would activate, it would start up, and about three seconds later, it would die again. Now, uh, again, on a positive note though, these tritium chargers are activating very, very quickly. Uh, that sort of 10 to 15 second, um, at most, uh, you know, turnaround time from when it plugs in to when it activates and charges, uh, which is about the best that we've seen for public charging infrastructure. But um, 
So I gave my contact information to ChargeNet. ChargeNet is going to be looking into this, seeing if it's something on Tritium's side, and if not, uh, maybe they're going to check these uh, these sessions and just see what happens. They have a newer Bolt EV, it sounds like, that does not have the same issue. Uh, so it could be something as simple as just the older, you know, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, some other factor that's going into it. Uh, so I'll let greater minds than my own investigate and then update, right? If they, if they have a chance to fix something on their end, then I can try it again in my Bolt EV and see if it works. In the meantime, if you don't drive a Bolt EV, these chargers seem to work just fine. Uh, I'd be interested to see maybe a, a Spark EV as well. Maybe if a Spark EV owner in the South San Francisco Bay Area wants to come by and check these chargers out and see if they get that sort of same ramp up to about 30 kilowatt and then die. I think it says like an 858 error code on the uh, tritium unit. So I guess sort of a, a disappointing end to <laughs> uh, a really exciting uh, charger location. Either way, good job, ChargeNet. Um, I'm really impressed. I'm, you know, can't wait to see more. Hopefully get this issue resolved with the Bolt EV because this is really kind of a perfect charger for them, per, you know, perfect location for Bolt EV owners. So I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think about uh, ChargeNet's model, their business model, how they're working with businesses, installing on-site solar, installing on-site batteries, uh, the tritium chargers that they're using, their whole uh, sort of business mentality in, in terms of um, wanting real-time uh you know, monitoring of their chargers so they know exactly what the status is, who's using them, who's not using them, um, and, uh, you know, just sort of working with the business to make sure that the business's needs are met as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and thank you for watching.